Today is a big day because we are unveiling CBC's 11th annual Disruptor 50 list to look at the fast growing private companies that investors need to know about. Julia Borston, creator of our Disruptor 50 list, joins us now. This year's disruptors face a far more challenging environment than past years as venture funding has slowed and valuations have declined. But innovation is transforming more industries than ever as we are on the cusp of a new era, the age of AI. And this year's list reflects that. Here are the top five. Number five, Wiz. Disrupting cybersecurity, Wiz's tools scan corporate cloud servers for threats, far faster than incumbents such as Palo Alto Networks. It scaled quickly amid the growth of remote work and cyber attacks. Founded in 2020, Wiz surged to a $10 billion valuation this year. Number four, Relativity Space. Proving rockets can be built quickly and efficiently using massive 3D printers. In March, it successfully launched one of these rockets for the first time. It did make space, so a max altitude of 134 kilometers, so well above the 100 kilometer line of, of space. Up next, reaching orbit and delivering on more than one and a half billion dollars in contracts for the likes of the Defense Department and Lockheed Martin. Number three, Canva. The Australia-based graphic design company has grown in just 10 years to more than 100 million monthly users and a billion dollars in annual revenue. In December, it introduced generative AI-powered tools to speed up its customers' work. Number two, Brex. Enabling startups of any size to access credit, the fintech company gained billions of dollars in deposits from thousands of new clients as it offered an alternative to Silicon Valley Bank following its collapse. And number one, open AI. AI. Chat GPT. AI. 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 Artificial intelligence. Chat GPT. Every company is going to be an AI company. Just two months after launching Chat GPT, the startup reached 100 million users, and it says it's on pace to generate $200 million in revenue this year from premium subscriptions and corporate licensing fees. I do think we are deep into a new technological wave, and this is. I think the biggest one in a while. You can find the rest of the list on CNBC.com slash disruptors, and we'll be doing stories and interviews throughout the day. Next up, I'm doing a deep dive into the rise of AI. That's in the 10 a.m. Eastern hour. And then in the 11 a.m. Eastern hour, I'm interviewing the CEO of Chime, which is number 15 on the list. Andrew? Okay, so Julia, if we go back, I know you keep track of this stuff. If, if, if you did the disruptor index as an investor, and I know, unfortunately, you know, most of these things are not available to public investors, though obviously many, many companies that you've had on the list ended up going public. We have an index. This is, this is possible. I don't know if we can pull up the stock Tell chart. Us. We've outperformed. So, yeah, what's the number? How, how are we doing? And, and so how I, are we doing I in mean, the last year? Well, so over the past year and also year to date, the Disruptor 50 index has outperformed. There it is there. It would be great if we could compare it to the NASDAQ. So obviously there have been a lot of ups and downs. It's quite a roller coaster stock um, for the whole tech sector for the past year. But the Disruptor 50 index, we're talking about outperforming the NASDAQ by 20 percentage points. So just to be clear, the Disruptor 50 index, those are companies that were at one point on the CNBC Disruptor list. The list is only private companies. Once those companies go public, they are then added to the index. So outperformance year to date, as well as over the past 12 months. So I guess we've picked some good ones, Andrew. It sounds like you have. So hold on, just so we're clear. So the index is only tracking them as public companies. It's not tracking the sort of mark to mark on them as That's private right. companies. That's right. We only track them once they go public. In our reporting and on CNBC.com, you'll find valuations, which is usually how these companies have been valued the last time they raised financing. Um, but sometimes it was two years ago. Some of these companies are actually valued less than, than when, if they raised financing back in 2021. Um, but I think for our viewers, what's important to understand is what are, these, what are the trends that these companies are representing currently in the public markets? And then also, what are these companies they should be keeping an eye on because some of the bigger ones could be going public as soon as that IPO window opens up again. I'm just looking at the whole list, trying to figure out who, who, else, I, 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 who else we know here. There are, there are many returning disruptors, but also uh, a, a number of new companies on this year's list, many of which represent the AI trend. Well, that's what I was going to ask. How much of this is AI, and how many of these do you think will be on the list? What's the, what's the turnover like in terms of like what it will be next year? 
The turnover is often more reflective of how many companies have gone public or sold, because some of these bigger companies, um, and also if you um, are too old, if, if, you know, if you've been around for 20 years, you no longer qualify. Um, so we have all the criteria and all the descriptions of what it takes to qualify up on, on CNBC.com slash disruptors. But I think what's interesting about this year's list is we've saw a decline in fintech companies, which is perhaps no well, surprise. That's what I, was say. I just see a couple. Stripe is number 28, for example. I assume Stripe was probably like in the top five or ten in the past yeah, couple of years, there right? was one year when Stripe was number one a couple of years ago. So we do still have fintech on the list. I mentioned Chime. You mentioned Stripe. We have Tala, which does does micro loans in emerging markets. But we are also seeing more health tech companies, and perhaps most importantly, it's really interesting to see the number of companies in the green tech um, or green energy space. So climate tech right. and green energy. Um, and by the way, a lot of these companies, whether they're in health tech or logistics or green energy, they are deploying. AI. So that's what's so fascinating right. is that 21 of the companies told us that at least half of their revenue is directly related to AI. Right. She's got my favorite company on here, I just noticed. What's your favorite Aura company? Aura Ring. Oh, Aura Ring. <laughs> Julia, have, have any poor disruptors from 11 years ago been totally disrupted? And they're out of business. Disrupted, yes. And some looks, some ended up imploding. You know, it's it's funny if you look at some of these companies. There was one that was like a, a satellite TV company um, that was the idea was that you could, you know, anyone could access TV at any point on their on their on their computer. And that business, which was backed by Barry Diller, totally put out of business by a lawsuit. That? So we've yeah. had our failures. This is yeah. like our own VC list. Up, yeah. yeah, Julia. Great to see you. Thank you. We'll be seeing a lot more of you throughout the day. Congratulations on the big Disruptor 50 list.